Ladies and gentlemen, Azmio coalition is officially over. Martha Karua has penned her letter to the coalition letting them know that following Raila's betrayal by basically sending his generals into government, NAC Kenya is no longer a part of the movement. Here's the letter and I quote. At the top, you can see the NAC Kenya logo and their slogan, Wongozi Bora. This is dated 25th July 2024 and it's being addressed to Honorable Junette Mohammed, the Secretary General of the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition Secretariat Parliament Building. On to the body, dear sir. Reason for the letter, notice to exit from the Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition and the body states kindly, take note that our stay in Azimio La Umoja One Kenya Coalition is not tenable due to prevailing political developments. As NAC Kenya, by way of this letter, we are giving notice to exit the coalition as stipulated in the exit clause into bracket S. I believe there's multiple clauses possibly in the coalition agreement. This notice is effective from the date of this letter. Yours sincerely, Asha Bashir, Secretary General. And we can see at the top right, it's been stamped received by the minority whip. So by the time this was being released to the public, it was already received by Junette Mohammed and this communication had gone into effect. So I think that's it for Martha Karua. Her stint with Azimio is officially over. Jeremiah Kioni, Kalonzo and Eugene Wamalo have decided to stick around. I don't know how much longer they'll do so, but they've elected Kalonzo Musioka to lead them in the absence of Raylo Dinga as he goes to seek his uh, AUC seat. It's not like he's absent and going to look for the seat. It's just that he's betrayed them. They're just trying to be diplomatic with their language. But either way, that aside, in this video, I want us to look into what next for Martha Karua after leaving Azimio coalition. Now, first up, there is a very big rumor, and if this is true, this will be the biggest political conmanship that we've seen in history. The rumor is that the next attorney general of this country is likely going to be a one Martha Wangare Karua. And that is why she is exiting the Azimio coalition in order to prepare herself for the next role as attorney general. It is a rumor. It has not yet been substantiated. Personally, when I look at it from a layman's point of view, I don't think there's much to it because by this point in time, Mlima Kenya appears to have exhausted all her available positions. Eight positions in the cabinet have gone to Mlima Kenya. Will there be a ninth in the form of attorney general? I don't really think so. But if at all they decide to even offer Martha Karua the role, chances are she won't take it. We know it because of her character. Martha Karua has so much, others call it integrity, Let's be fair to her. Others call it pride. She walked away from Zemoy in his cabinet. She walked away from Kibaki's government. She resigned. And we usually say, if somebody could not work with Kibaki, who was a gentleman, then who can you work with? If she could not see it fit to work with Moi Kibaki, arguably the best president this country has seen in its history, then who can convince us that she's going to work under President William Ruto and DP Rigadi Gashago, advising them as the Attorney General? And even if she takes up that role, it will be very embarrassing that she resigns six, seven months down the road because her advice is not being listened to. Like Justin Muturi was always complaining. The difference is Muturi was complaining, but he never resigned. The president had his complaints, he moved him to another docket. Now, in this particular case, Martha Karua might embarrass the president. Remember, at this point in time, the president cannot make any changes in his cabinet. His hands are tied. Any additional change that President Ruto makes in between now and 2027 just shows that Kenya Kwanzaa is totally confused, starting with the leadership. Because this first batch came in, they were approved, Aisha Jumwa and all the others in parliament. And then they were reshuffled. It was at that point that Moses Kuria went from Ministry of Trade and Investment and went to public service. And then after that, the entire cabinet was fired. After the firing, the president came out with a first batch of appointees. In that first batch of appointees, which he read, even before the document got to Etangula, it was shuffled again. Duale to Environment, Soipan Tuya to Defense. Then again, we have somebody, you know, any other change will just show lack of seriousness. So the president cannot afford to be appointing someone like Martha Karua. So I'm not going to buy into that story. But if at all, it will be to the detriment of Kenya Kwanzaa and to the shock of Kenyans. Second option for Martha Karua, which is the option that makes sense through and through, is for her to team up with DP Rigadi Gashagwa. Because now more than ever, rebellion in Mlima Kenya should not be tolerated. Reason being... Mlima Kenya region is being alienated and it's being alienated before our eyes. What we are seeing is very, very suspicious to anybody from the mountain. Because as things are, assuming President Ruto gets re-election in 2027 with Rigadi as his deputy, come 2032, Rigadi has ambitions to replace his boss. But the president has gone on to bring in 
people who have ambitions to also become president one day into his own cabinet. Joe is one. Oparanya is the other. As if Mudavadi being there was not bad enough, but at least he's a gentleman you can kind of work with him and see how things turn out. Even the very critical docket of treasury which was headed by Njuguna Ndungu now is currently being headed by John Mbadi. All the finances in the country are no longer having oversight from Lima Kenya, it is now Nyanza. So for Martha Karua, now more than ever, she needs to team up with Rigathi Gashago. And I can assure you for a fact today that anybody who goes to the ballot from Lima Kenya while at loggerheads with DP Rigathi will not win re-election. Whether it's the majority leader, whether it's Didi Nyoro, whether it's Kuria Kimani, it doesn't matter who it is. Whether it's Mwangi Kiunjuri, the governor who is always insulting Rigathi, all of them will be swept home. The same way we saw William Ruto haters being swept home like Gideon Moy, Raymond Moy, all the Moys are home today. That is what we'll see in Milima Kenya. So now more than ever, that team needs to bandwagon together because they are in the period or it's looking like they're entering the period of alienation from government. Something is cooking, we'll be touching on that shortly. Third option, she could quit politics altogether and go home and relax like Peter Munya or Dr. Fred Matiangi. But of the three options, if you ask me, she needs to team up with Deputy President Rigathi Gashagwa. If not that and at all, she's been offered a position in government as Attorney General, she should take it and work from within to the benefit of her region. Now, when I say to the benefit of her region, I'm not talking about taking resources there, but we are talking succession politics. We are looking at what next for her, her interests as an individual and her interests for her region. If Martha Karua at all cares about her region, she cannot be partyless like the Gen Z. Because right now she's like a Gen Z. She's not in Azimio. She's not in Kenya Kwanza. She's not even in the cold corner of Kenya Kwanza where people are looking like they might team up to form a party anytime soon. She is partyless, leaderless. So she needs to make up her mind and make it up quickly because in a year's time, the gun for the race to begin for 2027 will be shot and we need to know who is where. Now is when people are aligning themselves and strategically and are looking after their own interests. And if at all she works with Rigadi Gashago, if she wants governor at Apata, if she wants uh, women rep, whatever it is she wants, she'll get. It's only a position in government which is tricky because Rigadi doesn't really have that much leverage. The current CSS cannot be removed again. It'll be showing a total lack of seriousness. At the end of the day, guys, that's just my opinion. Do let me know your own comments in the comment section below. What do you think should Martha Wangare Karua do next in her political journey? I'll do my best to read your comments and to give you a response. Now, in the event you're here for the first time, please go on and hit the subscribe button. And if you're watching from a different platform, just head on over to YouTube, search for David Ofula. Hit the subscribe button. You're going to be getting a ton of content of this nature. If politics is something you're passionate about, this is definitely the one channel that you really, really need to subscribe to. All right, guys. Adios. Thank you for choosing David Wafula as your primary news platform. We put countless hours in research, recording, and editing. By showing up each and every day to watch our videos, you encourage us to generate more videos for the viewers. We are on a mission to inform, educate, and build a better tomorrow. To our thousands of followers in a world full of presidents, kings, and queens, you are the real gem. Adios.